So if you're brand new to the new macro creator and you're curious about how to actually make your own controls, well, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you how you can make all the different custom control types, what they do, and how you can use them efficiently in your own workflow. To start off, obviously, load into the new macro creator. Group select all your nodes first, does not matter the order, and then select one node to be your red node, the active node. This is the node that all of the custom controls we make today will be going on. So you can either make your own controls node or use a node already in the comp, like a background node or an alpha divide node that's not being used for much. We can then come on up here to workspace, scripts, find our Fusion Pixel Studios folder, the new macro creator, and launch it. You can choose to add controls from nodes first, or we can choose to start with something else. If you start adding controls first, it's going to be creating stuff on the controls page. But if we start adding other things first, we may be able to spice it up a little bit differently. So if we come on up here to the add drop down, we can, we can see first we have the open controls editor. This is Tita's controls editor, which is a nice, quick, and easy to use controls editor that I'll be having a video about in the future down below. It's not out just yet, but it should be out here soon. So go and watch that when it's out. Otherwise, we can come on up here and add a few different types of controls. First off, we can add a tab. This is a page or tab. If we come on over here to look at an existing node, our controls node, for example. So the settings tab is a tab on this node. We can see it is housing a bunch of controls. So if you look at a different node, for example, we can see this has two tabs, the controls tab and the settings tab with two different sets of controls. Let's go and reselect our controls nodes. We don't lose it. So if we come on up here, we can actually add ourselves a tab and we can set a name for it. So we can make this just main to make it the main tab and by default any macro you make is going to be coming with a controls page if you didn't already know the controls page even if you make a new page in your macro in the code it will still keep the controls page unless you hide it manually but with this tool all you have to do is just make a main tab in one of these first three slots of the new macro creator and that will get rid of your controls tab so we can then also choose an icon for our main tab and choose from this list we have right here i like maybe I like maybe this drop right here. This is just the blur. If you hover over any of these, you can also see the names. We'll just choose blur right there. And we can also make a tooltip or a full name for this tab, which will just show up if the user hovers over the name of the actual tab in either the Fusion page or the edit page. And it will just tell the user a little bit more information about this. You can also get rid of the settings page, which is this page, which also comes by default, just like the controls page, really easily with this checkbox right here. If you check this, this will be checked for any time you reopen this control with this with this comp and if you reopen this macro after the fact with the file it will also set this setting as the new default we can go in and press add real quick and it adds it really quickly in there with a background we can also add an image which is just going to either add it to the header or the control section of our node if it's in the control section you can really easily explain controls or like give values to different ends of different controls to explain what they do if it is in the header it's good for branding or explaining what this tool does so we can go and select our image and i'm going to go into here and i'm going to select images that i give you guys for free with the new macro creator pro if you buy that so i'm going to select my company logo right here i'm going to press open we can also give it a name right here i'm just going to call it fps logo and make sure that your image is either a PNG, JPEG, or BMP, I believe. It has to be either 355 or smaller in width, and then height is really anywhere is okay, but generally the higher it is, the less likely you want it to be that size, because of the more control space you're gonna be taking up. Once you do that, you can choose to see if it's gonna be a header image or not. I don't want it to be, I want it to be in line with all my controls, just because. We can add it, and if we look at our controls node now, we'll see it added this new user page and added a new control in here with my logo right here. You do not need to have the file location and the file on the user's computer if you want to sell your macro or give it away. We can come on up here and now we can add a separator line. This is going to just quickly add an automatic line which is going to up the number every single time you add a new line to your controls node. So we can just press separator line. We can see it just says separator one. Right here we can see we have beneath my logo is now just a simple line. It's really easy, just helps you separate things in the UI. We can also come in here and add a label. This is something that we're able to either add as an explainer, as just text on the screen, or as an actual drop down to hide and show controls within a different section of control. So let's say you want to put all the one types of nodes controls into this one label. You can do that really quickly and also hide and show that with just the label name being visible. We can come on here, we can give it a name, we can just say test label for now. And we can also style it with HTML styling like centering, bolding, underlining, strike throughing. And we can also make it a type of header or a paragraph or change the color of it really easily with this. This is how you can make it a drop down to make it a nest, makes it hide and show different controls. And this is also how many controls you're going to be hiding and showing with this. We'll just say five. This is going to make sure that it's either visible or invisible. If you can make this invisible, it will not show the name of your label at all. It will only ever show the controls. If it is closed, 
then the label will not show the controls. If it's open, then the label will show controls, but once again, not show the actual name of the label. This is how you, this is how pros actually hide and show controls on their macro. We can go ahead and press add on this now, and we can see also it adds this label onto the your controls node. We can come on up here. We can also then add a button. We can give this button just a display text or name, button one. And we can also give it a width between zero and one to give it either like half of the screen, quarter of the screen, full of the screen, all the inspector. And you can also put in a bunch of code really easily right in here. However, you can also edit button code really easily up here in the edit dropdown, coming down here to button code, and, and you can actually edit existing buttons code really easily right there. So let me go ahead and add this in here with a print that just says button. And let me just add it right there. And we can see it in our label. We can see that labels, if they're nests, they actually will hide and show controls in the preview to let you know how many controls it actually is hiding and showing. So that you don't have to worry about counting them individually to figure out which one actually is needs to be hidden. And then next step, we can come down here and actually add a checkbox. Uh, this is just a simple checkbox that doesn't do anything special. We just can just give it a name, check one. You can also give it a width between zero and one, and they can either make it tri-state or leave it as just the dual state. Tri-state means it has that middle state of being a square. So you can actually get zero, one, or two out of this instead of just the zero, one you can get normally from expressions. We can add this real quick in here and we can see we get the value of if it's checked or unchecked right there. And then finally, we can actually add a spacer, which will be hard to tell what it is, but it is essentially just a separator line, but without the actual line. So it's just a space in the actual controls. Super quick and easy stuff right there. Check down below for the actual tutorial for Tita's control editor. That's coming out soon, but not out just yet. So go ahead and look out for that when it comes out. But all right, go ahead and check out the new macro creator, see what features are in the pro and in the light, and go ahead and check out all the tutorials that I have linked down below. That's gonna do it for us today. Hope you enjoy and happy animating.